In this video, we are going to learn all about isosceles triangles. An isosceles triangle is a triangle that has two congruent sides. There are a couple pieces of important vocabulary to know. The first is that the angle that is between the two congruent sides is called the vertex angle. The other two angles in the isosceles triangle are called base angles. And what's interesting about the base angles is that they will always be congruent. Another way of thinking about this is the angles across from the congruent sides will also be congruent. So congruent sides kind of produce congruent angles. Now let's think about why this is and see if we can actually prove that those base angles have to be congruent. So let's draw a new triangle. And we know that this is an isosceles triangle. So let's call this triangle ABC and set up our proof. So, so far, all that we know is that AB is congruent to BC. And that's sort of given information because it's an isosceles triangle. Next, we're going to construct an angle bisector for angle B. So an angle bisector cuts an angle in half. So that means now those two angles are congruent and let's label this new point D. So the second thing we did was construct angle bisector BD. And the reason you can do that is every angle has an angle bisector. So at this point, we now have another pair of congruent angles, or our first pair of congruent angles. Angle ABD is congruent to angle CBD because of the angle bisector. So by definition of angle bisector, those angles are congruent. Now, we should also notice that we've created two triangles, and these two triangles share a side. Side BD is in common between the two triangles. So the next thing that we can say is that BD is congruent to BD, and that's due to the reflexive property. Now, you should notice in our proof, we've said one pair of sides is congruent, one pair of angles, and another pair of sides. And they're in that order, side, angle, side, side, angle, side. So that means that these two triangles that we've created are congruent. So triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. And the reason is side, angle, side. Now, because those two triangles are congruent, it means that all of their corresponding parts have to be congruent, because congruent triangles have all corresponding parts that are the same and match up. So that means that angle A, which will match up with angle C, those two angles have to be congruent. So that's the last thing that we're going to say. Angle C, or let's start with angle A, is congruent to angle C. And the reason for that is called corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, shortened to CPCTC. So what we've just shown there is starting with just some random isosceles triangle, given that the two sides are congruent, the two base angles have to be congruent. 